it was around 13000 Hello everyone and welcome to Simply Code. Today we'll be discussing HTML SSE. Before we start, I hope the screen is clearly visible and the audio is fine. If yes, please type in yes and if there are any issues, then do let us know in the chat section so that we can resolve them. Let's wait for some more minutes so that some more people can join us. Until then, let me tell you guys that we have regular updates on multiple technology videos. If you are a programmer and if you want to learn something new, then consider getting subscribed to our YouTube channel and press that bell icon to never miss any updates from Simply Code. So I think we can get started now. HTML Web Workers. We came across this term in the previous video. We know that JavaScript is a single threaded language. It means that JavaScript can focus on a single task at a time. To overcome this problem of single threading, the concept of web workers came into existence, through which we can make one process run in the background while the UI will show some other process. Now, SSE in HTML stands for Server Sent Events. Let's understand it this way. We all use social media sites like Google, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram and many more of other websites. You must have noticed that we get notifications from these websites regarding different events. Sometimes we get a notification from Facebook that one of our friends updated their profile picture. So what happens is we get updates from the server regarding the events happening on that particular website. Another example of the same is any news app or website we use. It updates automatically with every new event or with every news, right? In the same way, server sent request refers to the phenomena when the web page automatically gets updated from a server. In this video, we'll see how we can do it with the help of HTML and JavaScript. Not a tough task to do, but we require a bit of PHP for this task. PHP stands for Hypertext Preprocessor. So, I'll show you how to do it completely. Don't worry about it guys. The initial steps will remain the same. We have a HTML document here, you can see. Nothing different. Here you can see we have a PHP file as well. So this is our PHP file where we have one header, two headers basically, then we have a variable time which will take date or which has hours, minutes and seconds. Then it says data, the server time is and we are returning time in it. Fine. It might happen that you won't understand the code here as of now, but what this code, code will do is it will update us in every 3-4 seconds with time. The time will be in hours, minutes and seconds. Now. What we need to do is we need to accept these updates with HTML and JavaScript. But before that, you guys need to install the XAMPP server. Let me show you how to install it. So what you need to do is just go to Google and search for XAMPP. So here you can see you will get, we'll write over here XAMPP download. And here you can see we have this link download XAMPP Apache friends. So here you can download XAMPP according to your system. You can download it for XAMPP, for Windows, for Linux, for Mac OS and whatever like operating system you are using, you can download XAMPP for that particular operating system. Now once you downloaded it and you installed it, what we will do is you need to go to XAMPP server. So here I'll show you this is just search for XAMPP control panel and here you can see we have Apache, MySQL, FileZilla, Mercury and Tomcat. Fine. Now you need to do certain things like you need to check in which port your Apache is running. For that just click on this config button after Apache. Now you have you can see we have two different files. Apache one is httpd.config and the other one is httpd-ssl. So click on this SSL file. Now. Here you can see we have this notepad present over here. Now what we need to do is we need to 
press control plus F we need to find listen on this page so here you can see this is our first listen on the second listen here you can see it's 8081 written over here fine 8081 is the port number here you can mention any other port as well so if there is any other port like you are using port 443 or any any other port so you can change it to 8081 because this port is free in my personal computer so that's why I am using port 8081 save it just press ctrl plus s and close the program now you have to do one thing you have to click on this start button over here and you will see it running so here you can see it says ports 80 and 8081 are free they have taken both ports so just minimize it for now now let's move on to the programming part directly now what we'll do is we'll use HTML and a bit of JavaScript so this PHP file over here you can see the code over here so this is the PHP code for returning time now here we are in HTML file now what we need to do inside the body tag is we need to create a div tag or we can say we need to create a container so we'll use a div element with id as let's say res or result whatever you can say just save it and here you can see we have this html sse event so this is opened with live server live server won't play much of a role in this particular video we'll let you know why now we have created a container for getting the updates with id as or result that's it we are done with html part let's move on and now we'll get those updates from a PHP file using JavaScript so what we need to do is we need to include script over here so we'll write over here after this we'll use the script tag we are not going to create another JavaScript file this time we'll do it in this particular HTML file only so we'll write over here if now we need to use the type of operator this is one of the most important operators you should know in JavaScript so we we'll have to write here after type of we have to write here event source event source fine now you can see it's there's an error as of now it will go just write after me and you have to write here this not is equals to undefined so we have to write here not is equals to undefined we need to define an if else condition so this is the body of a if statement now we'll write a code inside this fine but before that let's do the code for else statement so what we'll do is we'll leave it empty over here the if statement will come back to it now what we need to do is we need to mention the else statement and here goes the body of else statement so we'll write over here document dot get element by id okay so we have to write here get element by id the id of a element is res or result we'll write over here dot in a html is equals to sorry not supported it may happen that your browser will not should not support this particular SSE API so we have to write a condition for this we will write here sorry not supported that's fine we are done with the else part now what we need to do is we need to write the code for a if statement fine so what we'll do is we'll take a variable first a simple variable fine so let's write it over here we'll write over here where source let's say the name of our variable is source we'll write over here new event source fine so we'll create a new event source over here inside this we are going to pass the name of our file we'll write over here time.php okay we are done with it and then in the next line we'll write over here source dot on message so this on message method or this on message event you should know about it if you are using JavaScript if you don't know about it just go through the previous video on web workers you will get to know about the on message and post message events so we will create another function over here this time we are going to create an event so we will write over here event and that's it we will print whatever output we get from the PHP page so we'll write here document dot get element by id again the id is result or res dot in html is equals to okay plus is equals to we will write over here event dot data plus let's give some space and we are going to give a break over here fine so i guess we are almost done with it yeah we are done 
fine. That's it. We are done with all the coding part. Now save the program. And you can see we are not still not getting anything because SSC does not work with live server. So here you can see it says live server is not possible without the body or head tag, but we have the body or head tag present. So let's save it again. And it's showing some sort of error. The, let's not think about it. What we need to do is we need to open this file. Fine. So to check the output, what we need to do is we need to write here. Okay, just let me add a new window. So we'll write right over here. Localhost 8081. This is our port number, if you guys remember. And we have to write here sse1.html. And here you can see it says the server's time is 13.41.14. 14. So it's the time where a server is currently present because the current time is around 5. So this is how it actually works. This is how the server sent events actually work. You can see it's giving us proper updates after each 3 or 4 seconds. So this is how the PHP actually work. You can use the port number you are using. Write this and pre just press enter. You can see we are getting these updates. It might happen that you guys can get you guys get uh, this error. So sometimes what happens is what you need to do is you need to just go in your file. So wherever your HTML files are present, just go to that folder. So let me just show you how it works. Okay, let me drag this from here. And here you can see we have all the HTML files present over here. Here you can see this is a HTML SSE one. This is a file which uh, HTML file we are currently working and the time.php we also have here. Fine, fine. So what you need to do is just copy these two files from here. Go to this PC, local disk C. Here you can see we have a folder named XAMPP. Click on it, double click on it and here you have to find one folder named htdocs. So this is our folder and just paste these two files here. So remember you must follow this step. So you need to mention these two files over here. Fine. And here you can see we have both the files. That's the only reason that's why our server is working. Fine. So let me just show you. So you can see we are still getting all the updates after every 3-4 seconds. Basically after every 3 seconds you are getting these updates, right? We are getting the time of our server. So it's not necessary that the time is uh, correct because the server, it's possible that the server is not present over here where we are. So we are getting proper updates. Fine. So guys, this is how we can use the HTML SSE API to get automatic updates from the server. I hope you guys must have got the concept of SSE APIs or we can say server sent event APIs. Don't worry about the PHP part if you are a newbie to web development. So you will get to learn about it soon. So we have a comment here from Girish. He says jQuery is still using or not. Yeah, you can use jQuery still. jQuery is a JavaScript library. You can use that. It's quite fun to use jQuery, Girish. And you can also go through the tutorials. We al already have tutorials present on jQuery in our YouTube channel. So you can learn jQuery from that particular playlist. So if you guys feel that we have missed out on some important topics that we were supposed to cover in this particular tutorial, then please feel free to drop them down in the comment section below and we'll have your questions answered as soon as possible. Also, we'll consider every suggestion provided by you guys.